And welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Glad you're with us. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And it's an even-numbered year, and that means it's campaign season, and we got the guy that knows all about the campaigns. We do. We've got Mike McCarville joining us one more time to tell us about his take on what happened uh, in the uh, primary election mm -hmm. and what the runoffs are going to look like, and probably might even get him to peer into the future at the general election. Well, you are. There's, there's really three election cycles here to talk about. What's happened and what's about to happen here in, in August, and then what's going to happen in November. Uh, it's a critical election season. Mike McCarville, today's guest on The Verdict. We'll be right back. We didn't just wake up with this problem. Barrel by barrel, dollar by dollar, we've been exchanging American security for foreign oil. Enough. We're home to a 100-year supply of natural gas, and now we know its potential. Fuel, power, cleaner air. See how natural gas is making a difference at chk.com. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Hospital. Go to saintsok.com and reserve your time online. Why didn't we think of that? Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today, once again, we're welcoming back an old friend, Mike McCarville, for his 15th, yes, that's 15th, appearance on The Verdict. Uh, elections come and go, but Mike just keeps showing up, and we're just so pleased he does. He accepts our invitation almost every time that he can. Uh, he follows national, state, and local races uh, very carefully. He puts out uh, very good information on the McCarville Report, something I look at every time he sends it to me, and it's always uh, got interesting uh, material in it. Uh, he's a former news director at KTOK. He is the editor of the McCarville Report, uh, the best source of political information in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, he is uh, always on top of what's going on, and he's been, we've been talking before the show started about these last elections and what that portends for the future. Mike, welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Glad my, to have my you. My pleasure to be here. You know, it seems to me like primary elections are usually more predictable than this one was, but there were two significant surprises. Well, one in the 5th uh, District race, who yes. finished on, on, on top and the, and the, mm -hmm. the leading vote-getter, and also uh, that Askins seems to not only close the gap but surpass Edmondson in the Democratic Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's talk about the governor's uh, primary uh, first sure, on, the, on, the, on the Democratic side. Uh, all the polls had uh, Drew Edmondson ahead by, what, 15 or 16 points percent. Uh, going into the primary election. And uh, here Jerry Askins uh, defeats him by about a little less than three-fourths of a vote per precinct. Well, everybody's saying, well, you know, what in the world happened? How did the polls get it so wrong? I think there were a number of factors at work. I think Askins clearly had the momentum at the tail end of the campaign. She had Barry Switzer's endorsement, uh, which uh, is not insignificant these days, it seems. He certainly helped elect Brad Henry, and I think he helped uh, nominate uh, Jerry Askins. 
Uh, and the other thing I think that happened on election, well, before I say that, Askins ran an absolutely smart campaign. Uh, she had, uh, she had, uh, I thought, some of the best television commercials that were on the air. They were single issue, they were simple, easy to understand. Uh, the guy standing on the street corner and the lady in the kitchen mm -hmm. could understand exactly what she was saying. I thought the most um, important ad she had was the one in which she talked about equal pay for yeah. women and stressed that as governor she would seek to enforce the existing law. And a lot of people made fun of that and said, oh, you know, that's, she's just pandering. It may have been pandering, but it worked. I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many women I talked to who mentioned that ad as the reason they were going to vote for Jerry Askins in that primary. And uh, it, I thought it was very effective. And my wife uh, mentioned that ad to me. Every, 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 um, my wife, a, a good voting Republican, said, boy, I sure like that commercial. I mean, you know, it just struck people that way. And, it's, and, and Askins comes across as very genuine. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what worked for her. Now, uh, mechanically, what happened in, on Election Day was that in Tulsa and northeastern Oklahoma, Drew Edmondson's perceived areas of strength, the Democratic voter turnout in the primary was about 5% below the statewide average. About 20% of the Democrats turned out, 25% statewide. What that meant for Edmondson was that his margins in Tulsa and those northeastern counties, Muskogee and on up, uh, were not near what he needed to overcome Askin's strength in uh, southern Oklahoma, western Oklahoma, southwestern Oklahoma. And uh, voila, she pulled off the mm -hmm. upset. Fascinating uh, to watch those election returns come in. And to me, what was really fascinating was she was never behind. She led all night long. And I think Edmondson knew 30 minutes after the first returns came in that, that he was mm -hmm. toast. Uh, now, in the 5th District primary in Oklahoma County, uh, the big upset, of course, uh, James Langford, the political newcomer, came out of nowhere to uh, run first over the perceived frontrunner, uh, former state representative Kevin Calvey. I think that's another case of a fresh face uh, who ran a pretty good television campaign, television commercial campaign, who had an excellent ground game going, and who used the social networks uh, probably as well as any candidate uh, thus far in Oklahoma has. Uh, Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, about 17,000 friends on Facebook, right. uh, Mick. And, Maybe the and best evidence that that stuff works. You know, we, we, we've been it, talking it does about work. it for it a does few work. years, and now with Langford, you're saying, well, there's no other way to explain it. That, uh, exactly right. And uh, I think he had, uh, he, uh, he had the momentum in the last few days of the campaign, and he uh, surprised and upset Calvi. And I think uh, that is a race now in their runoff that uh, Calvi's got a very difficult road ahead of him mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to win. How yeah. do you explain uh, Thompson's apparent lack to, of any traction? To I think he just didn't race. catch on <clears throat> for some reason. Uh, you, you raised almost $900,000 or probably a little more than that when it's all said and done, by far and away the most money. And of course, Calvi put in a lot of his own money. Uh, Lankford did not. He was able to raise money mostly from within the district. Uh, Thompson just never seemed to catch on. I think Lankford and Calvi had ground already staked out before he got in, and he just really didn't have anywhere to go for support. Mm -hmm. So what does Calvi need to do to kind of reverse the momentum? I think he's got to figure out a way to create the perception uh, that he's a winner despite having finished second when everybody thought he was going to be a winner. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think the way it, uh, it hurts Calvi uh, right at the outset is that a lot of the outside groups, Club for Growth, et cetera, that were helping Calvi with money, Club for Growth put $105,000 in the Calvi's uh, primary campaign. That's out of Washington. Yes, I don't, that support's not going to be there, I don't think, this mm -hmm. time around. Hmm. Well, we're two or three weeks away <laughs> now from the uh, uh, runoff. Yes. Uh, how do you see the race? Uh, I think uh, right now it's Lankford's to lose. I think Lankford's in the catbird seat, uh, continues to run the kind of smart campaign they ran in the primary, continue to use the social networks, and uh, make no mistakes. And uh, I think it's uh, his to lose. Does it matter particularly what the other candidates in the race that didn't make the runoff uh, do or who, whom they endorsed? I think it was important for Lankford uh, to pick up the endorsement of uh, Thompson, which he did, uh, and of Shane Jett as well, the uh, former, I mean, the state representative from Tecumseh that ran a kind of a distant fourth. Uh, he's got both those endorsements. Uh, I think maybe, maybe not as important from the standpoint of all of Thompson's supporters going to him, but perceptually, it was, here's the guy who finished third saying, this is my guy, and I'm an outsider, 
just mm -hmm. as much as he's an outsider, and mm -hmm. this is who I would go with. And I think it'll help uh, Langford. Let's drop down to the state legislative races yes. and the runoffs. In, in, in the Oklahoma City area, the, there's, a, there's, there's a handful. That's Which true. ones catch yep. your eye? Um, you know, Mick, there, there are not a lot of them that really caught my eye. We've got, the, the bottom line to me about these legislative races is that uh, when it's all said and done, come the general election, uh, the Republicans are going to gain seats in the State House and probably in the State Senate as well. So I think they're going to bolster their numbers. Uh, and uh, you, you know, none of these, none of these uh, runoffs for these legislative races have really bubbled up in the public consciousness yet. Maybe in the districts where they're really, you know, going at it in the trenches. But here, you know, we're just a short while after the uh, primary. So it's going to be interesting to see how they develop. Mm -hmm. It will. And uh, guess on the, the number of, of Republican senators versus Democratic senators after November's here? I think uh, in the, on the House side, the uh, Republicans are likely to pick up at least two to three seats and uh, at least two on the Senate side. Hmm. So I think it's, it's going to be a, bottom line is my estimation, it's going to be a great year for Republicans in Oklahoma. Hmm. And this comes as uh, the polling shows Barack Obama is favorable rating in the state of Oklahoma is 27 percent, hmm. yeah. yeah. which is lower than David Walters was in 1994 at the end of the Walters uh, campaign finance scandal. We're going to take a break and come back and more with Mike McCarvel. A lot more to talk about in this election season right here on The Verdict. I'm Beulah Shavney and I'm an original member of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps and I'm Chickasaw. I worked at the Phoenix Indian Hospital for a year, and then there was the war. I felt like it was my duty I wanted in the Army. So I made it, got in. And it was a good feeling to put that uniform on. We were one of a kind that started something and uh, finished it. To see these women go in today they are really doing a great job. And I'm very proud to look back now and see that I was one of the first ones of the Army that went in. There is just something that stands out about Chickasaw women. They want to go as far as they can go and succeed. And I've got to do my best because I'm Chickasaw. The oil and natural gas industry help provide a revenue that uh, feeds our schools, uh, providing a better education for not only my kids, but uh, for children all over the state. It will allow the schools to buy better equipment, we'll be able to hire qualified teachers, and all around to have a better educational experience. The future has never been brighter for our students here. We should be very proud of the oil and gas industry in Oklahoma. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and our guest, Mike McCarville. We're talking politics, and let's uh, continue to, to look at this summer's action, and we'll, we'll go to the lieutenant governor's race. What, what jumps out at you? Well, there? another uh, interesting race. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, pretty well-qualified uh, candidates. We've got uh, um, um, Lamb and, uh, and Kenneth Corn mm -hmm. uh, in that race, uh, both with uh, legislative experience. I mean, these guys have been around a while. That's going to be a spirited campaign. I think right now the, the obvious edge goes to Lamb in that race, just because I think it is going to be a Republican year in the state of Oklahoma. Was his rather strong showing in the in the primary any kind of surprise to you, or did you expect it? Uh, I pretty I mean, much he obliterated it. everybody else. Oh yeah, pretty well. It was what five five man race, and he got sixty plus percent of the vote. Whatever. That's pretty impressive. It was very impressive, and I think I think that'll surely help him in the general election as well. Okay, Attorney yeah. General's race. Well, uh, this was to me a. a relative surprise, I guess. Uh, Ryan Leonard, uh, the political newcomer, uh, versus uh, Scott Pruitt, the former state senator who's been on the ballot a number of times, uh, ran for a lieutenant governor and, and other offices. Uh, and I, I thought that race would be very, very close. It turns out it really wasn't, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Scott Pruitt winning, if you will, walking away. 
and I think he's uh, the odds-on favorite to be our next Attorney General. Scott Pruitt, an elected official in Tulsa and uh, a business presence in Oklahoma Absolutely, City. Absolutely, yes. And, and so we're seeing that the power of this, those two media markets at work here. Well, uh, absolutely, he'd run a statewide he race before, had he not? Right. Absolutely, he had, and he ran very well in Tulsa. Uh, and uh, that, that whole quadrant of the state, northeastern Oklahoma, uh, I mean, that's, that's where he has lived. Uh, and he had that presence there, and that certainly helps. And being on the ballot, certainly in the past, certainly didn't hurt him at all. Now, in that in that race, uh, it may not be the only one that there was, but it's the only one I remember. There was kind of a negative uh, uh, TV spot. Uh, run You're talking about Scott Ryan, Ryan, Ryan yeah. Leonard's uh, what they called the shopping yeah. uh, ad in, in, in the, the commercial. For those who might, might not have seen it, and I can't imagine anyone didn't see it, but just to, to remind us, uh, it was the, the whole premise of it was that. Here's a guy, Scott Pruitt, who has run for other offices before. Now he's shopping for another office. Uh, well, and a lot of Republicans reacted to that. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This Senator Jim Inhofe, he ran for governor in 1974 and lost. He ran for Congress in 1976 and lost. He ran for mayor of Tulsa in 1978 and won. He won in 80. He won in 82. He got beat in 84, defeated in his reelection campaign, stuck to his guns, elected to Congress in 86. And now here he is a member of the United States Senate. And so they're saying, wait a minute now, that's the same kind of the same background up to a point mm -hmm. as Scott Pruitt has. So what's so wrong with that? And I thought the ad was just, I thought it was discordant. Uh, and it just, it just was out of character, I thought, for Ryan Leonard. Mm -hmm. We have not talked about uh, November's races. <coughs> um, uh, Billy Coyle, the uh, fifth district Democratic candidate going against either Langford or Calvi, does he have much of a chance? No. It, the 5th District, too, Republican-dominated, especially in this election Absolutely. year? Absolutely. And whether the Republican nominee is Calvi or Lankford, they will win. Okay. And the governor's race. Uh, Mary Fallon uh, uh, handled Brogdon fairly easily? Yes. I would say uh, right now the, uh, you've got to give the advantage to Fallon uh, just because I think it's a Republican year. The trend, the fact that her, I mean, she's been on the ballot eight times. She's never lost. Mm -hmm. uh, Askins has got her work cut out for her, but don't underestimate Jerry Askins. She proved in the lieutenant governor's race uh, four years ago that she, mm -hmm. she's an underdog. She comes from behind. She did it again this time in the primary with Edmondson. And I think it's going to be a Donnybrook and a historic race. Uh, mm -hmm. First time in the history of the state. We've had two women running for governor. It's only the third time in the history of the country that we've had this happen. And, and, this, really? year, and this year it's happening twice. New Mexico, two females running mm -hmm. against each other for the state's top office. And here in Oklahoma, don't forget, we also have two women vying for the office of uh, state superintendent of schools. So uh, the year of the woman, yeah. perhaps. Well, if, if Fallon's the favorite and uh, <clears throat> Askins then uh, presumably needs to do something, needs some sort of strategy going in, what's, what does she do? Now, that's an excellent question. Um, I, I think uh, she's got to continue to stress uh, her um, awareness of issues in some depth. Mm -hmm. And I think the Askins campaign will try to do that and try to contrast her to uh, uh, Fallon. Uh, but it, it, this is a, one of those, both candidates in this race have got to be very careful. I don't think either one of them wants to perceive as, as per attacking the other. Uh, wouldn't seem ladylike, if you will, if that's mm -hmm. a proper phrase, but I, I think that applies here. And I think they're both going to be very, very careful. And again, it's a campaign in which each of them, I'm certain, are saying to themselves and their advisors, make no mistakes. Well, who's going to carry Tulsa of, of, of the two women candidates for governor? I would, off the top of my head, I would say Mary Fallon. I, th I think she would do well in Tulsa. What about the uh, Attorney General's race, Jim Priest uh, and Scott Pruitt? How do you see that? Uh, Jim Priest, one of the nicest guys in the world, uh, obviously a fine attorney. Uh, but I, I've got to give the edge to the Republican again. Mm -hmm. Because it's a Republican year, a uh, priest, uh, an unknown to a lot of people, uh, and uh, Scott Pruitt is much, much better known. But there's a lot of time between now and then. Oh, yes. A lot of time yeah. to get known, I guess. Yeah. A week is a long time in a political campaign, as the American explained to us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's a day to day. Yes, day to day, hour to hour sometimes. <laughs> what trends are you seeing, Mike, as far as the, the rural versus the, the urban voter? Are there any trends that you're seeing uh, that maybe emerged in 08 and seem validated in 10? No, I, I think most of those trends that we used to see, uh, urban versus rural, uh, have pretty much disappeared. What I, what I am seeing 
uh, much to the dismay of uh, the uh, liberal Democrats in this state, is that no matter where you are in this state, the conservative to moderate Democrats almost always are opting in general elections to mm -hmm. vote for Republicans. Mm -hmm. We are a state of people who we vote, we tend to vote for the person and not the party. Mm -hmm. It has been that way for the last mm -hmm. three decades, just about, well, since Henry Bowman, literally. But Oklahoma and I think City, it's going to continue. Oklahoma City politicians have had a tough time getting elected statewide. That's true. That and is, true. is if you're in Tulsa, does Mary Fallon seem like she's from Oklahoma City or is she from Tecumseh? I'm sure she's going to say she's from Tecumseh, <laughs> but the perception is she's from Oklahoma City. Well, and they I both, don't I don't see that as being a big hurdle this time mm -hmm. around. I may be wrong, but they both won statewide races to, to the uh, lieutenant governor's office. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this: two ladies. Uh, both have run statewide races before. Both have served as lieutenant governor. Both have fairly long experience in state government. Uh, and uh, Jerry Askins, a uh, member of the Pardon and Parole Board, uh, uh, Ken, and uh, mm -hmm. just uh, mm -hmm. judge, uh, yeah. a lot of solid experience. These are, if, if you look at it, and just stand back and look, it's hard to figure out how the state of Oklahoma loses with either one of them being elected governor. Mm -hmm. I think they're both uh, excellent, classy ladies. Both of them make an excellent governor. I just think Fallon is going to win based on the kind of year it is. Can we switch to national politics? Sure. Yeah. It seems to be a Republican year. Going again, nationally again. a Republican yeah. year, yes. I mean, Thanks in large part to Barack Obama. And yet you hear from time to time people saying, oh, that's overplayed. There's a surprise in the, in the, in the wings. Well, the liberal happen. Democrats will say that it's being overplayed. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's being overplayed. I, I pay a lot of attention to what's going on in other states. Mm -hmm. And state after state, poll after poll after poll, Republican advantage, Republican well, advantage. Well, okay, so is the president going to try and push this the so-called liberal agenda here while he has an opportunity, or is he going to try and move to the middle in an effort to try and save the House to begin with? Uh, no telling what Barack Obama is going to try to do, Mick, but now here's the thing that's happening to Barack Obama. As he's going into these states, for example, this week he's in Atlanta. Where are all the Democratic candidates uh, on the ballot uh, in Atlanta and Georgia when he's in town? They're not there. All of a sudden, they're all very busy. Yeah. They don't have time to go be with their president at public events. Yeah, two years now has changed that, a lot then. Now that is a clear signal. Oh, absolutely two years has changed a lot. That's a clear signal that uh, Barack Obama is anathema this, this time around. I heard a report just this morning that in the, that very uh, uh, Georgia uh, sequence of events, mm -hmm. Uh, was being discussed and the president is going to be there. But he's going to be raising money in private fundraising events, but then when it comes time for the public event, he's not going to be there. Hmm. He's not going to attend. So he's there to raise Probably money. Probably because he couldn't get anybody else to show up to be with him. <laughs> you well, never know. <clears throat> what is the state, uh, if, you, if you add up the vote totals for uh, Jerry Askins and uh, Drew Edmondson, and then compare that to the vote totals of Mary Fallon and uh, Senator Brogdon. Democrats had a higher number of votes oh, yeah. than well, Republicans. That, that, that almost always happens. And then, but what is the state of the Democratic Party uh, in Oklahoma today? That I, does I, not translate into an easy Democratic victory at, uh, in November. I, I think the Democratic Party in Oklahoma today is on life support. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the party, the, the, the people who run the Democratic Party of Oklahoma are far more liberal. Mm -hmm. uh, than the, the registered Democrats in the state. And I think that's reflected in, uh, I mean, you know, one, the, the community forum about, of Oklahoma about Democrats. 20 seconds left. The community forum of Oklahoma Democrats, uh, a blog, uh, uh, constantly denigrates the state's chief elected Democrat, Dan Boren. I mean, you know, they just keep attacking, attacking, mm -hmm. attacking. And it just shows how far out of the mainstream of, Demo of Democratic thought they are. Mike McCarville, our guest today on The Verdict. Mike, How time again. flies. <laughs> Kent and I will have a final word after this. Come back again. All children deserve a life of hope and love. But sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. 
good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers are wrapping up a show with Mike McCarville, the political pundit who's never a shortage for words. Never uh, uh, words or opinions, and <clears throat> interestingly enough, he's normally right, mm -hmm. uh, to the right and right. <laughs> uh, we want to welcome St. Anthony Hospital as a brand new sponsor to The Verdict. Really glad to have you folks. Absolutely. We want to give uh, Mike McCarville's uh, website information. This is a, a wonderful website for resourcing uh, political information and uh, breaking stories regarding politics. It's tmrcom.blogspot.com, or you can just uh, put Mike McCarville's name into your, your Google search engine, and chances are you'll find it very, very quickly. And again, if you have an idea about a show that you'd like to see on our show, The Verdict, go to our website. It's theverdict.tv. That's theverdict.tv. You can log on there and give Kent and I an idea about an upcoming guest or a subject that you'd like to see discussed. That's going to do it for this week's show. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We will see you next week right here on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.